Great Expectations Chapter 7 Before you read, answer the following questions. What has happened so far? What do you think might happen next? Chapter 7 Character List Orlik a man who works for Joe Gargory at the blacksmith. Estella Miss Havisham's adopted daughter. Miss Havisham a rich, elderly lady. Mr. Jagger's a lawyer. Herbert Pocket a relative of Miss Havisham, Pip's friend in London. Matthew Pocket, Miss Havisham's cousin, father of Herbert Pocket, Pip's teacher in London. Chapter 7 Early the next morning, at the gate to Miss Havisham's house, I had an unpleasant surprise. Orlick let me in. He told me that he was Miss Havisham's gatekeeper now. I felt worried and I went to see her at once. As I entered her room, I found that neither she nor her house had changed at all since my last visit more than a year ago. Then I noticed an elegant lady sitting next to Miss Havisham. When she looked up and I could see her face, I realized it was Estella. She was more beautiful than ever, but she made me feel like a poor working boy again. Has Estella changed much, Pip, asked Miss Havisham. Yes, at first, I didn't recognize her, I began. But now I can see. What? Please don't say that she is the Estella you knew. Miss Havisham said, annoyed. That Estella was proud and rude to you. Don't you remember? Well, perhaps, but it was a very long time ago, I said, not quite sure of myself. Estella agreed with Miss Havisham that she had been unkind to me. Has Pip changed? Miss Havisham asked her. Very much, Estella replied. Miss Havisham laughed and told us to walk together in the garden. As you have become a fine gentleman, I expect you have new friends, Estella said. The ones you had in the village wouldn't be good enough now, would they? I agreed with her. And at that moment, I made the decision not to see Joe again. Do you remember when you were cruel to me? I asked Estella. She looked at me in surprise. You made me sad then, I told her. I don't remember, she replied. But, you know, I have no heart, I am neither kind nor good. As she spoke, she reminded me of someone, but I did not know who it was. I forgot the idea, thinking instead how beautiful she was. But she was still so cold. Later, when I was alone with Miss Havisham, I told her that everyone must love Estella. Then she whispered, I'll tell you what real love is. It is giving your heart to someone completely, just as I did. She fell back in her chair with a loud cry. As I tried to help her, there was a knock on the door and Mr. Jaggers entered. I did not know why he had come, but Miss Havisham recovered almost at once. Do come in, Mr. Jaggers, she said. She was obviously expecting him, and thanked him for arriving on time. That evening, as we all ate dinner together, I noticed that Mr. Jaggers did not look at Estella at all. But she looked at him often. It gave me a strange feeling. As soon as possible, I told Mr. Jaggers how worried I was to see Orlick again. I was sure that Miss Havisham was not safe with him as her gatekeeper. Leave it to me, he replied, and he promised to dismiss Orlick. Estella planned to visit London soon, and I had agreed to meet her off the coach when she arrived. I was secretly delighted and could not sleep that night. I was now sure that Miss Havisham wanted me to marry Estella. In the morning, as I took a walk through the village, I saw several people that I knew. I did not speak to any of them, however, I was too proud of myself and my new life. I also kept away from Joe, but feeling guilty that I had not seen him, I sent him a present before I left. On my return to London, I told Herbert about my feelings for Estella. I adored her before, but I adore her twice as much now. I said. She will make you unhappy, he replied. You should try to forget her. 
I knew that would be impossible. When Estella arrived in London, some weeks later, I thought once again that she reminded me of someone. But who could it be? I asked myself. Estella climbed out of the coach. In her new coat, she seemed more beautiful than ever before. She stood outside the inn while I brought her luggage to her. Then I asked where she was going. I am going in a carriage to Richmond, she answered, and you are coming with me. You must take this purse and pay for everything. We are not free to do what we want, you know, we have to follow our instructions. She did not seem annoyed that I was going with her, however. While we waited for a carriage to arrive, we went into the inn to drink some tea. The room that we sat in was dark and gloomy, but I was happy because Estella was with me. Then Estella told me that she would be staying with a wealthy lady, who would be paid to introduce her to suitable people in London. Do you like your teacher, Mr. Matthew Pocket? she asked, after a few moments. As much as I could like anyone who is not you. I replied. You silly boy, said Estella, how can you say that? To return to Mr. Matthew Pocket, I am sure that he is a much better person than some other members of his family. They are Miss Havisham's relatives, you know, and they are jealous of you. I have heard them complain about you. But Miss Havisham refuses to discuss you with them, so they cannot influence her. A carriage soon arrived, and we set off to Richmond. On the way, we saw the walls of Newgate Prison. I told Estella that Mr. Jaggers visited his clients there, and knew all the secrets of that terrible place. He knows the secrets of every place, I think. Estella replied. I have known him for most of my life, but I know him no better now than I did when I was a small child. How well do you know him? she asked. I have had dinner at his house, I said. That must be a very interesting place, replied Estella. Just then, our carriage passed under a street light and I knew again that she reminded me of someone. We continued our journey, passing Mr. Matthew Pocket's house in Hammersmith on the way. I invited Estella to visit me there, and she told me that I was expected to call on her in Richmond. And, Pip, she sighed, Miss Havisham wants me to write to her often, to say how I am, where I have been, and what I have worn. She has given me nearly all of her jewelry, you know. This was the first time that Estella had called me Pip. I was delighted, and thought it would be wonderful if I married Estella and lived in Richmond with her. But in my heart, I knew the truth, Estella would never make me happy.